Well, hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Daisy McAndrew and I'm delighted to be hosting a series of videos on behalf of Sherman and Sterling looking at life post-Brexit. What are the implications, the legal implications, other ramifications of the referendum results? Specifically um, in this one, we're going to be concentrating on financial institutions in the light of the results. And I'm delighted to be joined by Barney Reynolds to talk through all those ramifications and implications. Barney, thank you so much for taking the time. Time. Obviously, the day after the result, there was an awful lot of doom and gloom and head scratching. And what does it all mean? We've had a bit of time for the dust to settle now. What's your view now? I think the basic situation for banks and investment banks is not at all like what's been reported. Uh, there are two basic ways forward for the UK in re-establishing uh, or establishing a new relationship with the EU. Uh, one is a continuation, in fact, of the current passporting arrangements, which have been the subject of so much commentary uh, with Europe, so that everyone can carry on doing business exactly as they are now. That's the first possibility. The second, actually, is to get something pretty similar uh, through a separate set of arrangements provided for already in existing European law under a concept known as equivalence. Um, and if you have equivalent laws to European laws across the various sectors, you get pretty much the same access as under a passport. Uh, I suppose at the moment, whilst we're in this sort of hiatus of, uh, of wondering what the result will be, maybe if we start with what's the worst case scenario, which I'm guessing is sensible to consider and then perhaps move on to, to, to more appealing scenarios. I'd say the worst case scenario, in fact, is the equivalence-based route um, because the equivalence doesn't cover every single aspect yeah. of the financial markets for banks and investment banks. There are certain gaps. Um, and there's a process to be gone through, and it needs replenishing constantly. And ideally, if one went down that route, one would plug the holes and have some sort of process to make sure it's evergreen and constantly replenished, and there's some negotiation as to the rules going forward. But that's the worst case, and it's not that bad. That's exactly what I was going to say. That doesn't sound too bad. So if we say that that's the worst case scenario, which isn't totally terrible, moving up um, into the, you know, the the better case scenarios. What do you, where does your heart lie or head lie think, think we'll end up? I think we'll end up with something not that different from yeah. what we've got now. Now, whether it's called a passport or not is a political question, uh, but I think in reality it will it'll involve access to the European markets for the UK, and in fact actually also access to the UK for the European markets. It's a two-way thing. Uh, they need access to the UK's um, uh, capital base and the financial market here, which is huge, uh, and the UK wishes to have some sort of continuation of the status quo. Obviously, we're talking about financial institutions, so you know, the investment banks and other banks. What, what would your advice be to all, all those clients that are looking forward? I would leave uh, things as they are now. Obviously, keep, keep an eye on uh, the negotiations and developments uh, and keep uh, uh, um, thinking about contingency plans and making sure that those take into account the various permutations. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't start doing anything right now. Yeah. Um, and looking forward, what is your gut feeling about what the end result of all these changes will be? I think actually the city will not only sort of continue operating pretty much as it is now, I think it'll actually start to do better uh, and the markets will sort of um, uh, thrive under this new setup uh, because the rulemaking process at a European level, some of the other aspects coming in in terms of attempts to try and harmonise tax and so on, those will become uh, less relevant to the city. And I think it'll, it'll uh, under the more, more liberal sort of Anglo-Saxon way of thinking about these things, it'll take off uh, even further. That's obviously a very optimistic view if you read the newspapers or talk to other people. Do you think others are coming round to your view that this really could be a win-win, not a lose-lose? Yes, I think that's a gradual um, sort of consolidation of thinking, uh, at least in the client space uh, along those lines. People are beginning to say, well, actually, this is an opportunity to look again at some of the rulemaking and see whether it was really necessary, pair back on some things that were unnecessary. Lord Hill was starting a Brit, was starting to do that at the European Commission. I suspect that process in the EU will slow down now, uh, but we can carry on that process and, and in fact, expand it uh, within the UK. And I, I'm very optimistic on that and I think it's becoming more and more the consensus view, um, uh, not necessarily still reflected in the media, uh, but that will follow. Yeah, well, fascinating to see that mood changing a bit from, from some wild-eyed terror into cautious optimism and even excitement. Yes, absolutely.
Okay, well, a very positive note <laughs> to end on. Barney Reynolds, thank you very, very much indeed. Pleasure.